Hi, my name is Robert Colgan. I'm a computer science major at Columbia University. And I'm David Gutierrez. I'm a computer science major at Florida State. We're part of the 2013 Amalthea Research Experiences for Undergraduates program at the Florida Institute of Technology. Chronic kidney disease is a condition that affects over 7 million Americans, especially African Americans. It is a progressive loss of kidney function over a period of months or years. There is no cure, and it is important to classify chronic kidney disease patients as either slow progressors or fast progressors in order to treat them accordingly. One of the main problems is that the kind of data that can be used to diagnose kidney disease is usually of very high dimensionality. Each data point can have thousands of features. This kind of data is quite computationally expensive to process and store. So in order to deal with it and other kinds of high dimensional data, we use dimensionality reduction methods. What does dimensionality reduction mean? Well, sometimes when we collect data about a real-life process, we don't know exactly what to measure, so we end up with a lot more data than we really need to understand what's going on. Not only is all of that extra information computationally expensive to store and process, but it makes it harder for us to understand what's really going on. For example, let's say we want to study the motion of a ball attached to the end of a spring. The position of the ball can be described with only one value, the distance along the direction of the spring. But let's say we didn't realize that, so we decided to set up three cameras all pointing at the ball from different angles, and each camera records the ball's x and y position in its field of view every frame. So for each frame, we get six values describing the position of the ball. If we run the cameras for n frames, we get n data points, each with six dimensions. Obviously, this is a lot more information than we need. That's where dimensionality reduction comes in. We could use a method like principal component analysis to take that six-dimensional data matrix and reduce it to one dimension, which simply represents the ball's position along the spring. Real-life examples are a lot harder than this one, and the underlying structure of the data can be much more complicated, especially for the kinds of medical data we were talking about earlier. Many methods of dimensionality reduction have been developed, and we've been working on applying them to the kidney data both to make it easier to process and store and to improve the accuracy of algorithms that classify between slow and fast progressors. So far, we've been able to improve on the accuracy of classification on the original data by almost 10% using a nonlinear dimensionality reduction algorithm known as diffusion maps. We think that it will be possible to improve the results even further with more testing and fine-tuning the parameters of the method. You can read more about our research at www.amalthia-reu.org. Thanks for watching.